If there was ever a proof of concept that truly did the damn thing, it was Assassin's Creed. Originally written as a concept for Prince of Persia, titled Prince of Persia Assassins, it would transform into the iconic game from 2007 we know and love now. But as the years pass and the, and the franchise changes, along with its core gameplay, story, and just general fan base, not many new Assassin's Creed fans go back to the original, saying it's buggy, repetitive, too old. While I entirely disagree, while I would love to see a remake for personal reasons, I mean, what we do have now is pretty perfect. So today, I wanted to go over the original Assassin's Creed and, I don't know, try to convince you it's a masterpiece or something. Just uh, kind of go over in a small retrospective kind of way. I even went back and replayed the whole game over again just for the video and because I love the game. And my wife wanted to get into the series, so there's no better place to start than here. While the graphics are a little dated, you know, in 2024 at this point, you can't deny that in 2007 this game was looking amazing, not just from the character models, but even from the environment itself, which is beautifully done, might I add. The color grade of the cities is such an overlooked feature, I think. Accra is dark, dingy, and war-torn, with a very unwelcoming feeling, while Damascus is brighter and more pleasing to look at. It's all conveyed in this amazing soundtrack. The gameplay, while nothing new, but kinda new for the time at least, some of it, feels pretty grounded, a more slower paced deal, which feels a little more real if you ask me. The game was going to go even more crazy in its original concept with the player not having any health at all. If you got hit or slipped up, you're done, son. But thankfully, the developers decided that was a little too crazy and gave us the synchronization bar instead, which, with it being a synchronization bar and not a health bar, it technically means that canonically, Altair never got hit once in the events of Assassin's Creed 1, which is absolutely crazy to think about, and it's a detail I kind of overlooked for years. And if you didn't know that, well, now you know. But either way, it's the same for the free-running mechanics. It may be slow, but in a realistic setting, it fits well. Though it is a little annoying, it does make it feel pretty real. And again, for 2007, this was top-notch. Still pretty crazy today to be able to climb virtually anything. And if you master it, then it feels very good. And a thing I think people forget when either playing this game for the first time is when they judge the wonkiness of the free running system, they need to understand it's not because the mechanics are jank, they're actually just really responsive. So 8 out of 10 times, if Altair does something stupid, it's because you did something stupid. I'm guilty of it myself, not understanding for the longest time that this system really takes discipline to get right. So it's just really responsive. And again, for the time it came out, it, it's still crazy. It's groundbreaking today, if you ask me. And how can I make an Assassin's Creed 1 video without at least talking a little bit about social stealth? The first four games do it the best, and I think it does it really well here. It all started right here, giving us the fundamentals, of course, as it's the first. Kind of like the free running mechanics, if you take your time and learn the system and understand your surroundings and your environment just in general, like you always should, it's one of the best parts of the game. When on a mission to be a blade in the crowd leading up to that intense moment that you're basically in slapping distance of your target, it's awesome. And really completes the checklist of the Assassin's Fantasy, which has sadly been lost over time with this series. But with all that, the story is just the thing that takes the cake here for me. While I won't go over everything or really much of anything because there's just too much to unpack for a short video like this, I have to mention, it was at this point where, believe it or not, Ubisoft actually cared about telling dark, mysterious, and very profound stories in the modern day and in even in the Animus. So let's start with the modern day a little bit. Where Desmond Miles, raised as an assassin, he ran away when he was 16 to lead a normal life, not wanting to be forced into the Brotherhood, and while he ran as long as he could from his past, it caught up to him. Somehow a medicine company of Stergo kidnapped him and put him in the Animus. Now the Animus, for those who don't know, but most of you clicked on this video probably know, is a machine that decodes genetic memory. Deep in our DNA, we house the memory of our ancestors. Matter of fact, I'll let the game explain as they would do better than I ever could. The Animus, which is, it's a projector that renders genetic memories in three dimensions. Genetic memory? Seems you'll need a bit of a tutorial. Very well. We'll start simple. What is a memory, Mr. Miles? It's the recollection of a past event specific to the individual remembering the event. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what if I told you that the human body not only housed an individual's memory, but the memories of his ancestors as well? Genetic memory, if you will. I discovered something most fascinating. Our DNA functions as an archive. It contains not only genetic instructions passed down from previous generations, but memories as well. The memories of our ancestors. 
And the Animus lets you decode and read these DNA files. Precisely. So held up against his will, he must re relive the memory of his ancestor Altair to find a treasure that Abstergo is looking for. But we can't just sink into the memory that they want, it's too unstable, so we have to go a little further back. For me, the modern day here does a lot. With only being a small part of the game, one of the best things it does, for me, is give context to the war that never ended between Assassins and Templars. They're not factions opposite each other, but more like adjacent to each other. And I love that about this modern day. So much context wrapped up in a smaller part of the actual game. But moving to Altair and his story, starting with recovering the said treasure the Templars are looking for, for our mentor, Al Malim, it gives us a look at kind of how shitty Altair is, <laughs> at least in the beginning, how arrogant he's become over, over time, maybe because the youngest master assassin ever gave him a complex, maybe other things. But I love this intro, as we get to the end of his story, in the first game, you see such a significant growth to who he was and who he is now. I mean, he always kind of remains hot-headed and kind of an asshole, but he comes to understand the world and what the creed means, more than, than anyone would ever know. After the failed attempt at the retrieved treasure, Altair gets stripped of his rank and is set on a new journey, nine targets in exchange for his life. Without much of a choice, Altair does this, and through his journey, each target clues us in on how the Templars, our enemy, aren't so different from us. They wanted the same goal, but with different means of achieving it. And with each target we talk to, the more Altair understands that the world isn't just black and white, that in a different circumstance, the Templars would be assassins. So there will be spoilers for this old ass game, so if you haven't played it, go do that right now. They're gone? Okay, good. The end of the game is the best, and my favorite part of the story. To see Altair's growth in such a short time, we play, we play as him, is perfect. One of my favorite cutscenes is when he is in Jerusalem to hunt the final target, Robert de Salva, and he's talking to Malik. Just listen. Fortune favor your blade, brother. Malik, before I go, there's something I should say. Be out with it. I've been a fool. Normally, I'd make no argument, but what is this? What are you talking about? All this time, I never told you I was sorry. Too damn proud. You lost your arm because of me. Lost Qadr. You had every right to be angry. I do not accept your apology. I understand. No, you don't. I do not accept your apology because you are not the same man who went with me into Solomon's temple. And so you have nothing to apologize for. Malik. Perhaps if I had not been so envious of you, I would not have been so careless myself. I'm just as much to blame. Don't say such things. We are one. As we share the glory of our victories, so too should we share the pain of our defeat. In this way, we grow closer. We grow stronger. Thank you, brother. Rest if you need to, Altair, that you might be ready for what lies ahead. It's perfect. It gives me chills every time. From absolutely despising each other at the beginning of the game, they become great friends for years to come until other events. But that's another story for another day. Anyways, getting caught up in a trap, one that I low saw coming even on my first time playing, is when, the, is when the game goes from 0 to 100. For me, I love it. Meeting Maria for the first time, Lowe's starting to unravel what the end goal is here for the Templars at this point, finding out Robert is gonna plead to King Richard to have the Saracens and the Crusaders join forces to fight the Assassins, it gets you a little hype for what's gonna happen next. So after speaking to Malik one last time in Jerusalem, we hit the road and fight our way through to get to Robert. And even though we get there and fight our way through there and he jumps our ass, we get his ass anyway. I guess he forgot we have the power of God and anime at our side. Wait, you and he reveals one of the greatest plot twists in the series. It's done then. Your schemes, like you, are put to rest. <laughs> you know nothing of schemes. You're but a puppet. He betrayed you, boy. Just as he betrayed me. Speak sense, Templar. Or not at all. Nine men he sent you to kill, yes? The nine who guarded the treasure's secret. What of it? It wasn't nine who found the treasure, assassin. Not nine, but ten. A tenth? None may live who carry the secret. Give me his name. Oh, but you know him well. And I doubt very much you'd take his life as willingly as you've taken mine. Who? It is your master, Al-Mualim. 
This blew my mind when I was a kid, and upon replay, you see it more and more what Al Malin was getting at, but it's the final fight that really takes it home. Returning to Masyov, to a cold and kind of apocalyptic type feel, we make our way to fight our mentor in a badass final boss fight. He tries to use the Apple of Eden against us, and well, it doesn't pan out for him, but you know, it's still just a really badass scene. I, I love the kind of context of this kind of final fight. We do win, and what happens to end it is just so damn perfect. Impossible. The student does not defeat the teacher. So it seems. You have won then. Go and claim your prize. You held fire in your hand, old man. It should have been destroyed. Destroy the only thing capable of ending the Crusades and creating true peace? Never. Then I will. We'll see about that. I applied my heart to know wisdom, and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also was a chasing after wind, for in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge, increaseth sorrow. Destroy it! Destroy it, as you said you would! I... I can't. Yes, you can, Altair. But you won't. This story is amazing. The dialogue is flawless, and the cliffhanger ending was so good, especially for the modern day. It was so good, I, I can't take it. Oh my god. It looks like... Is that blood? The hell were they keeping here before me? And what happened to him? What does it mean, I wonder? I can see the issues people have with this game, but I also don't. The missions aren't really repetitive. The structure, the structure is each investigation has context to what we're doing and who we're there to assassinate. The gameplay isn't slow or dull, it's just grounded and real. And the writing makes perfect sense in a beautifully told story. This game is amazing. And while it shows its age a little, that's only because this game came out, I don't know, 2007? So for it to still have such weight all these years later should show how special this game was. It felt like you were taken back in time, back to the Third Crusade. Altair is an amazing character that, aside from Ezio, has the most interesting story from all the other main assassins we play as in the series, especially if you play Bloodlines and read The Secret Crusade, which I highly recommend by the way, great read. From the story to the characters, the map, the soundtrack, social stealth, in a small package compared to the huge games we have today full of nothing, Assassin's Creed 1 doesn't get enough credit on how truly brilliant it was, for the time and even today. It was amazing, it was unapologetic for its goal, for the assassin fantasy, if you didn't like it, then too bad. And that was the attitude of this game, and I absolutely adore it. I can never do this game the justice it deserves in a short-ish video like this, so I will say if you want a video with everything laid out bit by bit, then go check out Laser's video. It's an amazing video, and Laser's is a great YouTuber, though he doesn't need a shout out from me, but I wanted to put it out there because that was an amazing video. But anyways, it's the only game in the series that has this kind of dark but real feel to it. It's not grounded in realism completely, but it felt real enough to actually be a thing that could have happened once upon a time, like a conspiracy. And while I think Ubisoft went in the right direction with the Ezio trilogy, it seemed to start falling apart with 3, and 4 was really good, but after that, especially in the modern day, it never really captured the tone of the original. None of them really have. I mean, to be honest, maybe 2, but not really. I'm even guilty of being critical to this game, though, uh, initially, but over the years, I have come to really appreciate Assassin's Creed 1 and what it did. I mean, it... It's the birth of one of my favorite franchises of all time, and while I know it'll never be the same again, I'm just happy with what we do have. If there was ever an Assassin's Creed game that deserves a remake with lots of love and care and attention, it's this one. Not Black Flag, but to be honest, it doesn't really need it. Other than maybe a visual thing, it's pretty perfect. And again, if you haven't played it yet, I can't recommend it enough. I only did a sprinkle of the story and the mechanics, but if you're interested, especially if you're interested in the series, you, you gotta you gotta start with the beginning, of course. 
but thank you Assassin's Creed 1 for starting my favorite series of all time and bringing me into this world with a really amazing story. But that's just what I think. Have you ever played the original Assassin's Creed from 2007? If so, do you think it's a little underappreciated? And what's your favorite moment from this awesome game? Let me know in the comments below, but that's all I got for you today. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe for more Assassin's Creed stuff that I've done and other things. But anyways, thanks for coming, and thanks for watching.